What's going on? I'm Sam and today I'm going up to Michigan to pick up a CNC plasma table. Now I already have Peter's at the shop and it's a 4x4. This one's going to be made by the same guy and it's actually going to be a 5x10. So quite a bit bigger. What's that man? Who's that? What's up Travis? Hey, hey. What's going on? So Griffin and I just got to Travis's shop. Griffin was able to play with his buddy Titus. They had a lot of fun. And now Travis is working on the control box I brought from Peter's plasma table, which is that 4x4 machine that he built him like a year or so ago. So he's going to replace these resistors so that it will work a little bit better and have some technical stuff going on. What is it? The torch height. Torch height. So he's working on that right now and changing out some resistors for the torch height control. So you're just changing out some resistors? Yeah, just these two guys right here. So we, we're switching it to high impedance for the Everlast. So Travis has been working really hard on the design of these new heavy duty machines. They're really clean and the way some of this stuff works is pretty impressive. It's super crazy the amount of features he's able to put in these and just the amount of improvements he's made over the last, I think, five years you've been doing this. Eventually I might have him build me one of these, but for now this 5x10 is going to be way more than enough for what I need. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's 82. It should, it should sit right on top. Yeah, I'm on the inside. Oh, dude, it's right there. It should just barely go. Looks good on the back. So I got this cutter from him, we got the control box fixed. It's getting late now, I have a long drive ahead of me. So Griffin and I are going to make the trip home and I'm going to unload this machine in the shop. I don't know if the forklift will be able to pick it up though, that will be interesting. I finally got this thing back to the shop and it looks like everything made it alright. So this video actually started on the 9th, that's the day I drove up to get this table. But I'm counting it as the video for the 10th because that's the day most of this action is going to take place. I got to unload it, get it in the shop, and I plan to have it hooked up today. Though, I actually might be hooking the smaller one up first and not quite getting to the big one. I'm not sure what's going to happen yet. I was supposed to go get this plasma cutter a few days ago, but because I thought I might have the sickness, I was in self-isolation and I was holding off. But I got my test results back in the morning, so I decided why not just go get this machine. I was really tired on the drive home, so I had to pull off and sleep for a couple hours. After that I felt great and I was able to drive the rest of the way home. Moving this might be a little challenging, but I have it tied up and it might work out. I tied it up to the top of the post like a buddy suggested and it seemed to work at first and then it became apparent that it actually wasn't working. I tried moving the gantry and adjusting straps all through this, but I never got it to balance quite right. 
At this point it shifted so the legs were over the fender, so there was no way that I could put it back down where it was. This is when I first knew I was in trouble, because there was no real good way to put it on the trailer. If I knew where things were headed, I would have tried a little bit harder and figured out how to put it back on the trailer, but I figured it wouldn't get any worse. <laughs> so I decided to back it out just a little further. And this proved to be a mistake because once it was backed out, I couldn't push it forward anymore because the other side was hitting some blocks on the trailer. This is when things started getting worse. The forklift ended up getting stuck because I didn't realize it, but one of the forks was actually pinched between the water pan and the frame, and nothing I was doing was able to free this. I put these jack stands down and I put ratchet straps tying this table to the other side of the trailer just so that I wouldn't be able to pull the table any further and make it fall off. And by using the ratchet straps to hold it steady I was able to eventually rock it enough that I was able to get the fork that was stuck to slide out and unpinch itself. I'm having a really bad time unloading this thing. I thought I was going to be able to come in from the other side, pick it up, and pull the trailer out, but the forks aren't quite long enough. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do yet. It's in a pretty bad position, and i got to figure something out quick. This is why I wanted a bigger forklift with longer forks and a higher lifting capacity. These extensions might not be long enough, but I'll find out here soon. Well, the forklift died, so I'm putting that on the charger. I came in to eat some breakfast real fast, realized the fridge is not cold, figured the evaporator fan was frozen, put a knife in there to try and turn the blade. Sure enough, the blade was hard to turn, so I took the assembly in the freezer apart to get to the evaporator fan. <laughs> It was like not quite frozen, but it was hard to turn and making a clicking noise. So I took it out. I was going to order one on Amazon. Coincidentally enough, the evaporator fan at the fridge at Peter's shop had gone out shortly after we moved in. So it's kind of weird that that happened to me in pretty much the same amount of time. Anyway, instead of ordering the evaporator fan like I did at Peter's shop, they're really cheap. They're like $23 on Amazon. I was able to take it apart and rebuild it. Now there's no friction. The fan's spinning great. So I'm going to put it back together and see if it will start working. I probably already lost the milk and meats that were in the fridge because it really wasn't that cold. And there's really not much else in there. So I should be good at least on that side of things okay that fan is now spinning fan spinning that means I'm done with this thing but markets opening so it's time to trade I still got to get this plasma table off the trailer though oh do you like that dog bed so I was outside, my neighbor was about to throw away this dog bed, and he's like, Hey, I saw you had a dog in there, would he like this dog bed? It looks pretty much brand new, his dog just didn't want to lay on it. So I was like, yeah, I definitely want that, and now Griffin loves it. Do you like your new bed? Okay, now that the forklift's charged, I can see if these wood extensions will let me pull the trailer out from underneath this thing. So with these wood 2x4s, I was able to reach across and pick up the other side, which meant I should be able to drive the trailer out from underneath of it.
I wanted to be cautious and make sure that it wasn't going to hit anything. So I checked everything and then started driving out very, very slow and checking along the way. However, you can see the fender actually did hit and it almost knocked it off these jack stands. This was by far the worst part. So I was able to use a floor jack on the front side so that I could raise it high enough that I'd be able to drive out from under it. Finally I was able to feel good about this thing because I knew it would be the simple task of lowering one side and then lowering the other side. At this point, it was pretty much done and good to go. I used the jack to pivot it, and all the danger was gone, because even if I dropped it, it would only be a few inches versus the two feet it was suspended before. Peter stopped over real quick to use the welder. He's been working on a new project that I'll get into a little later on. He was able to get what he needed done. I was able to move the shop around a little bit to get this plasma table out of the doorway. I have brake components coming for that T100 in a few days and then I'll be able to pull that out and sell that. I was hoping to get a little bit more done today but it got late pretty quick so I'm going to end up calling it a night. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Do you like that new bed? Is it so fluffy? What are you doing? Thank you.